As anglers, we probably don't agree on much, but there's one thing I think across the board every angler will agree on. Jigs catch big bass. There's no doubt about it. They get some big bites 365 days out of the year. But one thing that I've kind of done to sort of tweak and make my, my jig fishing a little more efficient is I've sort of segmented or, or picked out a variety of categories of, of jig trailers that address various and specific needs that I have when I'm on the water, whether it's spring, winter, fall, because a jig is one of those great baits that works any time of the year. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna run you through a very simple way to identify what trailer you need for when and what kind of action that provides for that jig because the different trailers that you use really create a different profile and a different sort of swimming or gliding action for any kind of jig. So one of the first categories that, that I look at is kind of your, your traditional craw style bait. Basically baits that have kicker style paddles on it. These appendages tend to move and sort of create drag on the jig. So basically water's warming, fish are a little more active, maybe your spring, summer, even fall, you know, with a bunch of bait running around. You want a little bit bigger profile and you want something to display some water. Maybe your water's a little bit dirty, maybe you're flipping. So I look at these guys as more of your sort of reactive style trailer. What they do with the jig is they actually make it swim a bit more. They'll create that water displacement and create that little bit of kick, that little bit of extra action in the jig to kind of, I don't know, just make it a little more of an active presentation. So really we're gonna frame these up from most aggressive, you know, your appendages, your kicking paddles, all the way down to kind of the most subtle. And right in the middle of those is these guys right here your creature or maybe kind of like a paddle tail style beaver bait. Really what sets these apart is it still has your, your appendage style kind of, let's call it the dangler right there, but really it doesn't kick. It doesn't have that, that water displacement, that, that extra action you get from some of those kicking appendages. And the way I like to describe the action that you get out of the jig with this is a gliding style action. So instead of the bait swimming through the water when you pitch it to that tree or you're dragging it over that shell bar, this really causes that jig to sort of slide and glide just fall kind of straight not so much water displacement but you're still getting some kind of action a little bit of movement from that appendage but really it's adding some bulk to that jig to make it a little easier to cast and pitch it's also adding some action because it's causing that jig to sort of dart and glide as you fish it You know, we've talked about putting things on the back end of the jig, trailers, picking your right trailer for your right water situation. Another little mod that you can do is you can actually put something on the front end. And this is actually a Viking switchblade. Basically it's a chatterbait blade. But what's super cool about it is it can actually be placed on any jig using this clipping mechanism just like that. So you can take, you know, your flipping jig, say you're flipping along a bank, a bunch of wood on there, and you actually reel your jig up and a fish chases it out. And you're like, hmm, these fish are kind of chasing. They want more of a moving presentation. Well, you can immediately turn around, take that flipping jig in that super heavy cover, put a blade on it and turn it into a four wheel drive chatterbait just to give you kind of a different look. So the most nuanced or the most finesse end of the spectrum is actually kind of a sneaky trick. And, and I'm going to tell you this, you guys are probably going to laugh at me a little bit, but this is tried, true, and tested. I guarantee you I've caught some monster fish doing this. And I think part of the reason is they don't see this presentation as much. Basically what I do is I take a stick style bait. There's a cutter worm, you know, just a regular style stick style bait. And one of the, the best techniques for finicky fish and, and hard to catch fish is the wacky rig, right? And oftentimes we'll just wacky rig with a circle hook. Well, what I actually like to do is take that stick bait and put it on the back of the jig, just like that with a wacky rig setup. And I know it looks kind of funky. It looks kind of clunky. But what it does is it adds some bulk to the jig, makes it really easy and castable. And when we're talking about a more finesse or nuanced presentation, the movement of this jig underwater is very slow because what happens is you get some resistance of the water as you drag it against that stick bait, also causing the stick bait to flare ever so slightly, just that subtle action of the stick bait that we look for. And it's a very subtle presentation, but the coolest part about it is no matter what stick bait you use, they're pretty bulky, right? So you still get that sort of bulky kind of big fish presentation when it comes to rigging up the jig. Super easy to cast, but definitely something they have not seen. The other thing that you can do, and it's also kind of sneaky, but a little more streamlined approach to uh, to the finesse deal. It's something I like to do maybe when I'm stroking a jig is I'll bite this stick bait. Whoop, that, was, that was really attractive, right? And I'll actually take that stick bait. Ned fishing is super popular right now. And all Ned fishing is, is basically taking a stick bait or a stick style bait, putting it on a jig head. Well, I'll actually thread this thing on just like you would a Ned. 
just like that of the keeper and it will be a stick style bait right on the back of your jig just like that what's really cool with this is it, it gives a very subtle action and when you're like jerking it stroking that jig it causes it to dark almost like dark almost like when you're fluke fishing because it a very sort of erratic sort of jumpy action very cool but at the same time very subtle and i guarantee you something they have not seen <laughs>